Okay, ideal first date meal, go. Easy, broccoli, blanched, lots of garlic. Okay, Mr. Farts, go on with your bad self. <laughs> okay, Nicole, Mr. Farts was my father. This, this is, is a hot dog, dog is, is a, a sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaity. And today we are also co-joined, what the hell, that's not a word, <laughs> by the end undo- like conjoined? <laughs> or conjoined, conjoined triplets with Emily Fleming of Mythical Entertainment. Woo! Hey, how's it going? Also Unbreakable, Kimmy Schmidt. Um, yeah, I you like wrote a bit on Veep that didn't make the air. That was no, cool. no, no. I was in Veep, yes, but I was a deposition attorney that you do not see. But I am talking off camera to the people. Keep up, Josh. The point yeah. is, you have an incredible career, an incredible legacy, and Thank to you. me, Emily, you're. <laughs> 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 your biggest, cut, cut out the naughty word I just said. Your biggest legacy is that you, I think to me, are you're like the Dr. Drew of the mythical offices. You give the best dating <laughs> advice. I don't think it's I give joke. any don't. advice what at all. What are you all. talking about? All I do is tell stories about how horrible my past is with dating. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know. Maybe that is a form of advice. I guess. I think Josh thinks it's it is. It's like, don't advice. do this stuff. Wisdom. <laughs> it's wisdom that you it's, bestow upon mythical yeah, folk. You're the wisest is. dater that I know. The Wise. I don't. <laughs> if I was the wisest dater, I'd be done by now. Fair enough. Exactly. I guess it's not really a volume yeah, yeah. game. <laughs> but the reason we want to have you on is because today we are talking about the ideal first date food. Mm, okay. And you have talked about a lot of foods that you've had on first dates. Yeah. And I feel like you would have some opinions on it. What do you think it is? The number one. I mean, I think pizza is the most neutral. Like it's mm. you aren't going to argue about it. Um, maybe they'll show you a really cool new pizza place. I went on a first date not too long ago to Quarter Sheets. Very nice. cool new pizza, cool place pizza place in Los and Angeles. I loved it. Even though, like, and the there was a little bit of a wait, but the wait was cool because we got to get to know each other outside while we were waiting. Cute. That's a good point. In the open air, in the Los Angeles <laughs> air. Um, and <laughs> then we finally got in, and I was like, I usually let the guy order. I like to split... How do you go about food. that? Because I've I've never, no, I I, I have ordered for people, but okay. it's because they insist. Mm-hmm. But like, do you just be like, hey, I would like to relinquish this duty upon well, you? Well, he picked the place, mm. so I was okay. like, show me what your favorite stuff is here, since this is your pick. Good job. And I usually, I mean, I I guess I'm like, man, I got a people pleaser thing when it comes to dating, which this I is should, also a therapy I should get session. rid of that. But um. He everything he ordered was great, and then I wanted cake, so I ordered the princess cake, and it was like the best cake I've I ever love had. Princess cake, it was Underrated. so good. I I think about it a lot. I also think about just cake in general. <laughs> I say I think about Trevor's cakes and and that he's mm-hmm. made in general, which is true. But, what about uh, reservations? No reservations. No reservations. How do you feel place. about that? Um, <sighs> I like reservations. I'm late all the time, so it kind of <laughs> me stresses too, me out. Like. <laughs> That just, that's bad to I'm be also, late on a first date. Julia was late like 25 minutes to our first date. Wow. That's and we had a res and I was just oh. standing outside. Yeah. You Dang. didn't sit? No, they wouldn't seat me. Well, I would I also they wouldn't, wouldn't want to like sit. I wouldn't you? but I also wouldn't want I wouldn't want to sit and wait for my dad. I'd want to wait for them outside and then like yeah. give them the awkward one-armed hug, you know, kind of the left arm just kind of dangles by your side. <laughs> so she did a little power play on you. Mm. Where she's Hell like, yeah. I'll be late yeah. and you're gonna you're gonna like just it. Let him sweat. Let I don't sweat. think it was let knowing yeah. knowing now her general tendencies, that wasn't a power play. It's just a life problem that she uh-huh. has. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's being <laughs> late everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah, the first date I like the idea of sharing stuff. Okay. I love shared Big plates time. because also when you get your own entree. I feel like you eat too much, and then you're holding in farts for the entire first date. <laughs> Farting is a Mrs. big farts? thing to consider. <laughs> I am, I am, mommy farts. <laughs> okay, I'm baby don't, farts. Don't Google mommy farts. Baby farts. <laughs> also, no, if we get sued by the baby shark people for, for singing baby, baby farts, farts, I swear to God, that'd be the funniest way to lose. That'd a be job. the best way to get sued. Remix. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the best first date food, Josh? 
I, I have a very specific strategy for food on first dates, okay. and I call that the stress test. Hmm. Where Okay, especially, I didn't start dating in my, in my adult life until I was like 27, 28, right? It was in a long-term relationship. Oh, got it, okay. And so for huh. me, once you reach that 27, 28, it's mm-hmm. like you're not just dating for funsies anymore. You want to at least see a path forward with somebody. That's the goal, I would imagine. Some people want to have fun and, you know, F around. Sure, That's sure. Right. And then you eat they whatever. They have a biological you know? clock. Yeah, That's what that is. My biological clock is thick. Like this, yeah. I can't stomach. stand that that whole like uh, um, I'm just gonna have fun thing. I don't have time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think you get it. You dudes have all the time. Yeah, that's true. Which they're proving yeah. that they don't actually. Oh, really? I'm so into it. Their sperm is not good yeah. after 40. Really? My little baby swimmers yeah. are dying in the window. They good. Like they don't make the good babies, or they just don't do the thing that they're supposed Though to they, do. They they can get there, uh-huh. but the the there they get, uh-huh. it's not as good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, da- I'm dating like the Mormon kids in high school did, where it's like, yo, if if we kiss, we're getting married. And so not necessarily like that. Aww, but that's so cute. Point is, point is, I like was, you know, looking for someone that I could at least spend a fair time. amount of time with. Sure. Yeah. Someone that shares the same values with me sure. and eating for me is a big value. Sure. Yeah. That I put a lot of, you know, sort of my life into. And so I think you got to like eat the messiest foods possible. You got to <laughs> share all the foods. You got to go like get, get ribs, get some foods that challenge your palate. Oh, dang, a lot of fermented ribs, ingredients. Man. You know, and like I know going to a fancy restaurant on a first date is the worst. A bit loaded, yes. right? People don't yes. like it. No, don't but if do that's that. something that's important to you, like I like Julie and I on a first date went to uh this restaurant Nightshade that was like Ooh, they had a cool. they really had nice. a tom yum battered blooming onion. onion. Yeah. They had like uh, a, a a sixty dollar version of French onion dip that came with caviar. Mapo Ooh. tofu lasagna. Mapo this tofu lasagna. Really awesome restaurant. Great. And so it closed. I got it closed. No. <laughs> and we ordered all five desserts on the menu. And so yeah. that was like an immediate. Oh, we are connected in this way, and we share a big hobby. That's really cool. And also the moment that I knew I really like fell for Julia on our first date is when we were just locked into conversation. One, you know, like how people hate people with podcasts. That's the thing. Do there was an article that came out recently that was about that was about why women don't want to date quote the podcast guy because every guy is a podcast and I understand the general. I'm gonna change that to TikToker. Okay, yeah. right on, right on, no right podcast on. guys. No, I don't care. Like even if it's I, here's the thing: if you're doing a podcast and you're, I mean, mythical is a different story. Like mm-hmm. you guys are, you've earned your way to this <laughs> position. Thank and, you. That's but um, when you're just a dude or a lady. Who's doing a podcast? I hope you're doing it for fun first yeah. and foremost, because if you're doing it to like be super successful and you're like, I'm this is gonna take off. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. woof. I don't want to hang out with that person. There's <laughs> there's a level yeah. of delusion to that. But of if you're course, to, if you're doing it because you like to do it, then I think that's that's rad. I think it also falls into the um, overly enthusiastic about topics and uh in that mansplainy vibe you know mm. like dudes have a podcast think they have more to say than the average person oh. they like to hear the sound of their own voice you're Main talking about that syndrome yeah white yeah, yeah. dude with a podcast yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, day. yeah. and i'm a white dude you know with a podcast i mean co-hosting a podcast but I mean, Nicole, boom um, hashtag not all white dudes with a podcast <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much but but like julia um she was like hey i listen to this really interesting podcast on radio lab you should listen to it then at least we have something to talk about in our first date and so we did it was called the right to be forgotten whoa, love whoa, radio whoa. Lab. wait 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 backtrack she gave so me homework she gave you homework on before your first date. And, I, and i loved it because <laughs> then hilarious. immediately we could talk about something that I wasn't like what do you do what do you have a family oh my I god you have a sister seeing a theme here about josh liking to be maybe dominated <laughs> or like i love being told what to do and I take instructions really well I'm service oriented I kind of like the same thing Josh I want to be told what to do same Um, because (laughs) I I mean it's true I don't like being uh, fully in control because I don't trust myself with my ideas (laughs) (laughs) all of I think maybe that has to do with like working in in this field because I'm not anyone's boss Mm. so I always go is this good (laughs) how's this (laughs) like <laughs> Do you like this? Oh my god! Like it's, that's pretty much <laughs> that's me so looking at notes in my script all the time. <laughs> going, oh, Matt, tell me Did if this you make like you it. Laugh? I'm the officer. <laughs> Hello, Al. Yes? I have to make so many calls on a daily on a daily basis, just on everything, on a title, on a thumbnail. Yeah, what do we cook? Deep, all this yeah. stuff. That when I'm outside of my job, I don't want to make any decisions. No, decision no, no. Tell fatigue. me what to do. Yeah, that's decision exactly fatigue what is a thing. It really mm-hmm. is. I, I I looked at it on TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> I I think. Um, oh, so. The second date I went on with this quarter sheets guy mm-hmm. was Valentine's Day. 
Oh, that's a big that's a big second date. Do you think it was um, planned that way on his side? I don't care. Okay. Um, I, it was like the day before Valentine's Day, but clearly it uh-huh. was, you know. Uh-huh. And um, he took me to uh, what's that? What's the sushi place that's on Hollywood and Vine? Katsuya. Katsuya. Yeah. That's so and nice. That made me a little bit anxious because it was more expensive. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh-huh. And he paid for the first date. And I like to, um, I don't like for guys to pay on dates all the time. All I the like time. Sure. to like power move, pay for the first date. But I had just spent a lot of money on a, a trip mm-hmm. and yeah. I didn't have much money. <laughs> and I sure. saw the prices and I was like, oh, I can't be just. Some lady who just goes, mm, I'm, I'm a, yeah. I'm a princess, and you will buy me whatever I want. I don't want to do that. So I was just, I went, you, you order again, and he ordered really good stuff. But it's like I don't like their sushi, man. Really? It's just like I think it's a place that you go to be seen. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The atmosphere is is the ticket price, and it it's made me sushi, yeah. super anxious to be in there. Yeah. But I know he was trying to do it to like be, I don't know, like. Really sweet and impressive. Sure, yeah. But then a fight happened at the bar. Oh, that's fun. Oh, and then I was gosh. like, this is my kind of place. That's like, the best first like, date meal. Go somewhere, go to a Waffle House yeah. where a fight's going to break out because yeah. that's dinner and a show. I think that if you if you get to know me better, I want to go places like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so it was. I think it was a, a good contrast to the two dates. But I would have been, because you can't just go to another pizza place. I don't know. Yeah. I think second date is the most stressful. I agree. Mm. I think your first date should be as low touch as possible possible right always there was no sit down dinners there was no movies two easy exits there you <laughs> need to just get in see if you vibe get out yeah that's how my first dates always planned out yeah i don't yeah. usually do a get out i usually go home with them oh well i i, get out. <laughs> I, got, too. I have to leave no no i, I don't leave. but i don't do the do do the, the do you don't do the do, <laughs> I do the, I, mountain dew I don't, I don't, first date sponsored by mountain dew. mountain dew with the guy no i don't do that but i am <laughs> gonna make out and stuff yeah sure i making out's fine i do it in public doesn't matter but like when it comes to food i always find myself um Leaning towards ice cream or frozen Ooh. yogurt or a dessert. You're not even doing a cocktail. full meal then on a first date. Never. So it's never, like never. never. What about with David? What about with David, your husband? I was like, who's David? David. <laughs> with David, our From, first date, Israel. our first date was ice cream. Aww. Really? Yeah. And we had it at Salt and Straw. I don't Ooh. even care for their ice cream, really. But um, he took us to Salt and Straw and we walked around because who knows if with we're not. With your little cone and like walked around? I am around. actually a cup girl. <laughs> I, had, I, had a cup, oh. I had a cup with um, a spoon. Well, what I actually do is I get a cone and then I flip it over and then I crumble the cone. <laughs> a little bit, I like and then this. I eat it with a spoon. But um, yeah, always ice cream, frozen yogurt, dessert, or a drink. I never go. I never used to go to dinner on a first date because what if I don't like them? I don't want to share a meal with someone I'm not vibing with. Yeah. What is right. it? A business transaction? No. I'm like looking for love. I'm looking for intimacy. So it used to be like messy food, like you it used to be like I ribs or wings or or handheld foods. But like the older you get and the more dates you go on. I don't have time to eat chick- a basket of chicken wings with someone I don't want to, you know, sleep with. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think? I mean, th- I feel like this is probably a pretty easy question, but women seem to have more bad first dates <laughs> than men, right? And th- we're I speaking think... in very heteronormative terms, but these are our experiences. Uh, do you think that's true? Um, I don't, because I'm awesome. <laughs> that's a, right. Because um, I'll dominate the conversation if you like. Let me do it. And yeah. if he's not entertained by it, then he is not going to be entertained right. for the rest of the relationship. Yeah. You put that on them. Because it's going to be a lot of this from <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, if he's funny, too, that's when it's great. Um, sure. If he's funny and then he's also entertained by me, mm. then I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. But if he's, oh, God. I Yeah, there's the worst first dates are when a guy – Asks you what you do. I don't want to talk about what I do for a living on the first day. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about like what are you into doing? Mm-hmm. Like why do you like this? Why do you like this restaurant? And like what do you and your friends do? That kind of thing. What mm. do you would you watch last? Like yeah. that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I don't like talking about what I do because the minute you talk about comedy is the minute a guy goes, I should probably do that. And you're like, <laughs> I'm like because it it implies that it's easy mm-hmm. that if i can do it that yeah. surely yeah. any man can do it and i'm like i <laughs> okay like <laughs> so yeah. i'm not into that but most first dates for me i get uh pretty schnockered 
and then I'm entertained. I know by how drunk <laughs> I get, how much food is I just like liquor. them. Because if I like them, I don't end up drinking very much. Great. Oh. And if Great. I don't like them, I'm like, I got to get another drink. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like make yourself interesting. I'm going to be like shots. Yeah. Like immediately I need shots. Sure. Yeah, I've been there. And I've then I'll there. still go home with them and make out. Okay. Yeah. But then the next day I'll be like. <laughs> All right, we should do this again. And ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love when they go ghost on our behalf. Right? I know. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, they thank know. Thank you so much. I had a couple that, that did that, yeah. and I was like, you know, that's really I nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you want like the ability, you want something low touch so you have the ability to bail. So you don't of want course. to invest that much into a first date. I mean, I don't see why the guy should even invest sitting down. In, well, for me, having a guy sit down and invest a whole meal if, if there's no point, if but there's no future. For me, my theory on this and why like ice cream and coffee is a bad first date. It's not a bad first date. You can feel things out, but you don't get like the full experience enough to make that judgment call immediately. Whereas, Disagree. Whereas if we're going to like a, a place that makes neo-Neapolitan pizza, that's right. <laughs> pizza. Pizza on a Neo Neapolitan. What is Neo Neapolitan? So Neapolitan, Neo-neo. right, has very, it's probably the best I pizza know in the world. Neapolitan. A lot of oh, pizza Neo-neo. or pizza, ice pizza. cream? Pizza. All right. And, <laughs> and so they're doing new stuff. But the point is, so I, I once took somebody on a date to Pizzana. Uh-huh. Um, because they were like, I like pizza. And I was like, Pizzana is my favorite pizza, but it's I've a little bit of a there. fancy. Good. A little bit of a fancy thing, $20 plus personal yeah. size pizzas, natural wine, stuff like that. And we ordered wine and this person, the the guy, the server came and poured them a taster and they stare at it and go, what do I do with this? And I was like, oh, you generally just drink it and go like, hey, that'll be great. And they'll pour you a full glass. <laughs> and the server was like being cool and chatty. And they I just, hate that. You could tell that they were just like nervous. And then they go, yeah. I've never drank wine before. That's And so I was sweet. like, you know what? And they were like, I don't know. I, I just drink hard kombuchas. And then Ew, I realized that's that like. So sweet. No. That's not so sweet. Well, no, but but it was it was immediately a thing that they. <laughs> And it doesn't matter if you'd never drank wine before, but you were curious about the process and you went into an unfamiliar situation. Exits are on the side (laughs) of the building. But that to me is an immediate stress test. If we Mm. went and we got ice cream, maybe we would have had an interesting conversation, but I would have left out like a big part of my life. And I know food's not that big of a part of everybody's life. Yeah. But to me, that's what I mean by like weed it out early. Hmm. And then they were they were very sweet, and we went and got salt and straw afterwards. And um, never, yeah, but never you're not cool. dating that person anymore. What? You're not dating that person. I'm not anymore. dating that person. I hope they're they're very happy and living yeah. a successful life out there. I mean, also the thing is ordering drinks when you don't know the person very well. It's like, do I show them how much of a problem I have? How? <laughs> do, but no, no, no. But that's a question. That's a question. Do you show them that off the bat? Yeah. No. I mean, if I really like the person, no. Yeah. <laughs> but no. if I'm like. I got to get through this. I'm like, let's... So you're guarding yourself for the person that you really like? Well, also the person that I went on that the pizza date with does not drink. Okay. Mm. That's so it's new, like, but I still, right? what I asked, like, I see that you don't drink. Is it cool if I do? And mm-hmm. he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. But I had two glasses of wine, which is not a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> Remember when the doctor asks you like how many yeah. dr- oh, <laughs> how many drinks per day, and he asks and you um, if you're good to drive. Um, I don't drive. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I always forget you don't drive. Everybody always goes, um, "What do you have like a DUI?" I'm like, "No," <laughs> and that is exactly why I don't yeah, drive. Good job, yeah. good job, good job, <laughs> no, no, that's not true. There's a lot of reasons. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, do yeah, have yeah. a DUI. No. no. Oh, you said that's not true. I don't. I don't know what no, you're talking about. No, I don't anymore. have a DUI. She's good. Keep it that way. Because I drink. <laughs> No, that's not true. Because I drink, so I don't own a car. But that's not true. I I don't own a car for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I don't want to. Why are you? Can we? You mentioned what? a doctor asking you how much you drink. Can we just talk about how they're always shocked when you say like more than four? I don't yeah, like zero. like they've never heard of. Are they all just nerds who have never had more than four? No, drinks in their I'm life? like you're a doctor. Ooh. I would be drunk all the time. Like <laughs> doctors are drunk a lot of what? the time. I know. It's um, like when dentists are like, you don't floss three times a day. No. It's like not everyone cares. Just, or you floss too hard, and then you have gum recession. Oh, I'm like, oh which is another recession. No winning. But no, another <laughs> recession. <laughs> but honestly, I never tell my doctors I drink. I always say zero 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 for everything. Yeah. Do you guys say I that? lowball it. Okay. I lowball it. Because I haven't been drinking as much since January, which I'm pretty proud of. But Can like you. thanks. Um but yeah, I, I always go like, yeah, you know, like a couple times a week. <laughs> uh, I have I just have a couple. And it's like <laughs> when I drink, like on the day that I drink, it's mm-hmm. like eight. Yeah. Like I, I went uh for uh St. Patrick's Day, me and Michaela were hanging out. Ooh, and actually fun. me, Michaela, and V went to uh 
V did not want to come, <laughs> but, but we made her come. And uh, we were at Margaritaville. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. of course you and immediately, Michaela and I sat down and we were like, uh, beer and a shot. <laughs> like, yeah. That's and the then best. V got there and we were like, shots. And it's then, all about intention. And then Michaela and I went and like, I don't know how many more bars we went to, but it was like beer shot, beer shot. <laughs> like, yeah. Constantly. What's that called? A boiler room? A um, boiler maker. Boiler maker. Boiler maker, which is yeah. like I do usually like bourbon and a beer, but for I don't know if you're shooting it, then it's like tequila is probably yeah. the best mm-hmm. way. That's to right. Um, but yeah, we we hit. The, but I'm not gonna do that on a date. Um, yeah. Shot on a beer. I've I was a big shot on a beer girl. On, on a date, the, like yeah. in front of a what, what, in, front I, of, in front of in front of a man. Okay, okay let's spell this out. Any any choice you make about food or drink on a date, right? It's not for no reason. It's to communicate something about yourself. Yes. So what right. were you trying to communicate with ordering your shot of beer? <laughs> that I was down and cool. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, exactly. I was down and cool that I'm a cool girl, <laughs> that I can do a shot in a beer, and I can, you know, hang with the guys. Yeah, yeah I'm not right? a regular mom. Uh, no, I'm a cool mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just wanted to appear as, like, really cool and, like, and like not like another typical Persian girl, quote unquote. There it is. Yeah, because Persian girls don't know what a boiler maker is. We're like, tequila, skinny margarita. You're not like other girls. You like yeah. whiskey and yeah, pizza. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But did that change for you over life? Of course. Now I don't care. I'll do whatever I want. Yeah. Especially on a date with my husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing about having a partner. He now knows you can do whatever you, you are. Want. He gets it. It's just a lot of sitting like this and just <laughs> sucking out like shrimp. Also, that's another thing. A lot of the times... David is not a big seafood fan, like how how your guys aren't an alcohol guy. Like, yeah. and I, I'm like, do you mind if I get mussels? And he's like, <laughs> sure. Oh, but I don't know if his sure is real or not. Yeah, do you think he doesn't want to make out with you after that? No, I just think he like every time he has like seafood, like an, if he looks at an oyster, he like wants to vomit. So whenever I tell him like, oh, I'm going to get a dozen oysters with like my friends, he's just like, okay. That makes <laughs> me worried for your intimacy. Oh no, no, that's good. <laughs> Our intimacy is great. <laughs> That's okay. great. All no, right, that stuff's really good. He's not D, no no DJ Khaleding there. My my <laughs> biggest of that, thing. I don't do that. <laughs> what I don't because when I was sixteen, um, the first time he threw up. Oh, the guy threw up. Mm-hmm. Wow. Nightmare. Sock him in the yeah. face. So I don't do that anymore. You know, hey, well, okay. Here's <laughs> that's a great no. Man. That's a great lead in. That's a great lead in well, because yeah. what that's ultimately about is that you finding a partner who satisfies you, your needs and yeah, you satisfy theirs. You're yeah. talking about going to like... I love how um, <laughs> we're talking about eating on dates, but now we're talking about eating out. <laughs> on yeah, dates. Yeah. And eating out. Well, it's good. You know, it's <laughs> like... a family uh, show. You better leave that in there. The family show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is... A, uh, not to bring sushi into this now after that topic uh-huh. especially, but for instance, <laughs> this, this sure. two-date couplet that you had going from pizza, which you said was like the ideal first date because it's low touch, yeah. you go there, you get a yes. glass of wine, a beer, whatever... And then immediately somebody thinking I should escalate that to a nice sushi restaurant because yeah. sushi is a pretty stereotypical answer of what's a sexy date night food. Of course. Yeah. Not for everybody. Which right? is odd. So the key is so to sexy. like listen to your partner mm-hmm. about what they want when it comes to food. Uh, yeah, One of the on best the first, first dates I had was getting carne asada fries because this person said they love carne asada fries and I was like, let's go to my favorite spot in LA for them. But going on a first date, it's like you're not really uncovering all those layers because you don't have to, I feel like. I feel like you should though. To me, like uncovering layers is what dating is all about. hey yo. Uh, is that know, a clothing no, 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 yeah, I'm not that is. guy. I'm not that uh, guy. I don't know why I, I um, said it like I was that guy. Well, also, the worst, I think, for a state food is anything that you have to, like, do deal with fork and knife. Like, yeah. a steak. Really? How do you How do you focus on what the other person says if you're like, is this too big of a piece? And Am I going to get, okay. No, and no, then, no. like, it's kind of hard to mm-hmm. cut. I don't know. And then you get that big piece, and then it's like, oh, this was too big. And now we're chewing. And now we're chewing. And we're, we're not talking, and we're chewing. Ever. And it's like, I don't know. Steak gives me anxiety. Also, like, (laughs) if I order it, am I ordering, like, I'm a medium rare girl. Is he going to think that I'm insane and or a carnivore or something? No, I don't Um, think you should think that way. But, uh, yeah, I think that the steak thing stresses me out. For a first date, yes. For a third date, I'm... Oh, yeah, steakhouse. I'm going in with my hand, picking up the lamb chop and eating it. So Nicole's a third date stress tester. I'm a third date. When it comes to food. I guess. I think that's a great... If you've invested invested that much time into you, then it's like, now I can do with food whatever I want. 
Fair, fair. Yeah. And I think that's, third that's date fair. Stress. Actually, I, I did that on a fr- on like a third, fourth date with a guy, and I literally the lamb chops came, and I just grabbed the handle and mm-hmm. I went to town, and he stared at me like yes. this, and he was this close to saying, "I love you." I swear, guys, that was oh. the funniest thing in the world. Yet, yeah. oh, can I, I don't talk you? to him anymore. He's dead to me. <laughs> I thought you meant he's actually dead. I no, was no, like, no, all right, cool can want. I tell you real quick the third date that I had with this guy? Yes. So yeah. I took him um, to found oyster. Incredible. We Bro. went there. And Paul, what a, what a restaurant. Again, no reservations. Mm. But oh my God. it wasn't that long of a wait. So we Must got in. Nice. And I mean, with two people, it's not so bad. But, um, and I got, we got like a bunch of oysters and, and stuff like that. And it was like delicious. And he was into it too. So I was That's like, yeah. this is a good. And then it was like, I picked it. So mm. I was getting to pick everything. So I thought that was a killer third day. But I think that's, so I think that, that trio of dates yeah. is pretty solid. So I like it. Pizza, um, sushi. I guess we went to seafoods, and then like you know, no, oysters. but you went a different kind of seafood in a point where you two could sort of meet in the middle. Yeah, you know and what that's I mean. Great. Yeah, something that's familiar to you that you feel really comfortable with. Yeah, you know, and I think that's beautiful. And that's what to me, food right during dating. It's like a, it's a. My headphones fell. <laughs> to me, food in dating, it's a metaphor. It's a way to communicate how sure. empathetic of a person you are, how responsive you are. If yeah. you're listening to their wants and needs, right? Mm-hmm. Like I remember, um, God, this one girl told me that she was really into sushi. And I was mm-hmm. like, great. And I, I booked at one of like the top omakase spots. Wow. I didn't listen to what kind of sushi she was into. She was like crunchy shrimp, She please. was like into crunchy shrimp rolls. <laughs> and so we show up to this omakase <laughs> spot <laughs> and, and she tries ordering a side of spicy mayo. Ooh. And I was like, all right. What's wrong with that? I just wasn't listening. Can't do it at this place. At oh, this, that place. You know, this yeah. is like the servers are wearing Rolexes and it was like a dude from Japan who's some rich lawyer from LA flew out to Japan and was like, you, I want you to come back to LA for yeah. me and my buddies. <laughs> and then he opened up like a 12 seat sushi restaurant. That costs a lot of money. And so it was, you know, egg on my face because I simply didn't actually listen to what they were saying. I was like, oh, I can impress you because you said one thing to me mm-hmm. as opposed to actually going, oh, my God, tell me more. What's the best sushi you've ever had? Yeah, Why but does, does she so know who she's going on a date with? Probably like, not. you know, she it's, didn't really know. It's not that she's not listening. You're not listening to her. It's like she doesn't know you. She doesn't know you. Like she's not listening to you I, or like reading into that. I don't so. think they're listening to each other. But I always put <laughs> this is not a good. Match. I always put the onus on <laughs> yeah, myself, exactly. though, and I think that's like an important thing for me when it comes to relationships is I can't control what you think or what you feel, but I can control my own actions and the way that I respond to situations. Right, yeah. And so that comes into play with food too. When I was 21, I told myself, I'm like, the guy that I'm going to end up with, we're going to, you know, we're going to eat charcuterie boards together. Uh, we're going to have oysters together. We're going to really explore food. We're going to go to all of the fine dining restaurants the world has to offer. And then when I grew, I'm 29 now, I realized all of those things (sighs) are so... Ter- like tertiary, they're so unimportant, right? Because the relationship I'm in now, I am so fulfilled in other aspects. I'm like, mm-hmm. I can go eat this food with my cousin. I can go eat this food with my friend. Like, the food aspect of dating is important. Don't get me wrong, right. but it is not. Once you're like invested and you're in it, it is not the most important. Well, thing I don't know about all. you, but when I was 21, I was this like <laughs> skinny blonde Disney princess looking person. And I just wanted to be wined and dined because yeah. I thought in my mind I was going to move to New York City. Sure. And then I was going to be like, I was going to meet a rich guy yeah. and he was just going to shower me yeah, with yeah, yeah. presents, oh, yeah. furs, diamonds, you know. Were you like <laughs> then, 1921 New York? I, I kind of was. a flapper girl? I incredible. think I imagined the whole like following lifestyle. your dreams yeah, in New York City. Sure. And I did date a couple of guys. David Hot David, I've mentioned uh-huh. in an yeah. episode. I can't remember what episode yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of like wealthy guys who kind of did that, and uh, they were the worst. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And How do you think they got rich? Yeah, they by, were being terrible. Terrible by being bad people. Terrible yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. one was that like he sold insurance like the devil. Oh. Um, and uh, <laughs> I know a lot of insurance salesmen. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know a lot of bad people. I do. I'm kidding. No, <laughs> I do. But no, it was like, oh. So then I learned from that that I just want to do what I want to. Like, I yeah. got to meet somebody on my level. Sure. And going out to dinner, if you can't go to like a, a kind of, you know, hole in the wall or sure. a dive or something like that, then I don't think we're going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not going to get along. Um, but yeah, I think dive bar pizza situation, way to go. I, I feel like I need to. Um, 
give you guys some advice against what I do real okay. quick. The people or us? Uh, the people. Okay. Yeah, we're done um, dating. Yeah, right? you're married and you're engaged. You, you're done. Um, I, we have no more life to live. Fine. You know, I go home on the first date. You shouldn't. Um, <laughs> like they shouldn't or they should I'm obsessed. listen I to their own I can't heart. give you that advice because you're nice kids. Whoever's listening to this is nice kids. And I, I'm a almost, I'm like 5'10 and I have a taser. <laughs> if a guy tries to mess with me or attack me when I first go home with him, he's going to die. Uh, <laughs> you're like the drug dealer in the movies who like pulls a gun on a kid and is like, don't get into this life, no, kid. It's not just, for you. Stay in school. It can be a little dangerous um, going on a date with someone you don't know from Very a dating true. Very So true. just keep that in mind, kids. Um, I'm not saying buy a, te- a taser. A teaser. <laughs> yeah. a teaser. I'm, a, I'm a teaser with a taser. <laughs> um, no, I'm saying Great just uh, just be safe out there and um, you know check for cold sores and stuff. The official date- dating advice. Buy a taser. Yeah, buy a Not taser bad. and um, protect yourself. Taser condom, you know. Taser condom duo. The duo. Yeah, they should sell those in a pack. Yeah. And lube. I think French onion soup is the best. Ramen! Oh my God. Well, like, oh, a Caesar salad. Oh my God. Yum. Ew. <laughs> Sharing a nice omelet the night, the morning after. Okay. Oh, fried oysters. You Yum. can't make out after a Caesar salad. Kimchi pan. Well, okay, here's one thing. I can here's make one out thing. All the time. I can make out after <laughs> anything, make out baby. You, you do stinky food make out? I, I, Big, I, stinky, I love kisses. Stinky food make outs are my favorite. I brought this up, and I've, I've brought this up with Julia as Jeez. well. Um, I hate when people like brush their teeth or mouthwash before making out because I'm like, no, I want to taste your I day. I want to taste your whole day. Yes, let's go, Nicole. I don't like. I don't want to taste the mint. I, I want to taste, taste you. you. Oh. <laughs> oh. I wish I had your life. <laughs> oh my god, it's so disgusting. Oh, we body swap, and I just go home to David. Surprise. Sup, dude? Want to play? Swap is the same. We're the same freaking person. Sup, Josh. dude? Want to play Rocket League? <laughs> oh, hey, I forgot something. I gotta tell them today um, or soon. Um, there's a dating app episode for GMM coming out that yours Watch truly it. wrote and pitched because I'm in dating app hell. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so check it out. I did a lot of a lot of soul searching when writing it. And Good for um, you. thank you. So uh, <laughs> I love that there's <laughs> the two dating related things. Is this my brand now? <laughs> I didn't mean for it to become my brand. I, I thought it was just uh, drunk lady was my brand for a while there, but this we're is constantly adjacent. involved. We're adding constantly facets. <laughs> uh, in summation. Yeah. Eat whatever the hell you want. Listen to your partners. Be empathetic. Have a keen ear. All right, Nicole and Emily. We've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. <laughs> time for a segment we call... Opinions, Josh. <laughs> are like, Cass, I'm sorry. Oh my God. I was laughing at Emily <laughs> being embarrassed Stupid. of us. Stupid. Man. Roll the theme music. Before we get into opinions or our casseroles, we want you guys to watch our new series called Aprons Off, uh, where we don't really cook and kind of just hang out with each other. We talk, we chat, we do fun little activities. Sometimes we eat, sometimes we don't. I really enjoy it. Yeah, and I take my apron off. <laughs> Find out what else I'm going to take off. That's right. Check us out on YouTube.com slash Mythical Kitchen. My socks. You see my feet. Okay, that was a good plug. You see your feet? Well, I don't know, but now we have to. Now we have to put my bare feet on there. Every time Josh calls me, it's a picture of his bare feet with colored pencils. I didn't make that choice. (laughs) To be clear, you You look so sweaty. Do you have a wiki feet, Nicole? Of course I do. I do, and they don't like it. They love my feet. Wait, what are you? What's your rating on wiki feet? I think it's like a two. Mine's four point eight seven. Mine's four point five. Yeah, the comments are put them away. (laughs) Um, That's a real comment. (laughs) Listen, listen, everybody, everybody makes fun of the feet. Everybody makes fun of the feet, guys. They are a powerful audience, and we would love you on our side. Feet, guys, furries, please watch Mythical oh, Kitchen. Yeah. We are for you. We love the They're furries. They're very nice. They're generally pretty furries, nice. Furries, feet, guys. I, I'm so into under like to being. Not, I don't want to participate necessarily <sighs> sure. in, in the whole thing, but I would like to hang, and I do want a costume. But also, <laughs> if someone could just uh, call in and tell me what makes a good f- 
foot? Because I don't get it. Like, you don't need to call and you can just DM her. We don't want to get that on our voicemail. No. I don't want to know. Sure. Maggie, yes or no? Maggie doesn't want to know. Maggie don't want feet don't content. Want but yeah, DM Emily and then, you know, talk about feet with her because she wants to achieve I want to understand five it because I, I get pedicures and everything. Like what? what Maybe that's I, not what they want. It's maybe. the opposite. Okay. They want it something depends. with character. It depends. All right. Depends okay. On mm. depends I'll on work guy. on it. I'll work on my feet. Apparently mine are already pretty great. So yeah, right. same. <laughs> Let's get in the first voicemail. Hopefully it's about feet. <laughs> um, what's up? My name's Cameron. This podcast is awesome. Um, Thanks, man. I was gonna say I just made a pizza. Congratulations! And I had a weird idea. I just put Worcestershire on my pizza. So uh, try it out and let me know what you think. Uh, love the podcast. Right? Did you like it? I wish I knew if they liked it or I not. I wish I knew if they liked it. I think that they Cameron, did. Cameron, call back. Tell us what makes a good foot. And if you like the Worcestershire <laughs> no sauce pizza. No content. Um, it seems kind of basic. I don't know. This uh, doesn't seem like a. Mm, I disagree. Worcestershire sauce is an incredibly complex sauce. Well, it's you put it on steak. It's like, a, it's, like, it's like A1 water. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It is. It's like if you took A1, you diluted yeah. it, you put it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious wait, about. Wait, wait, wait. Is A1 not Worcestershire sauce? No, A1 is a steak sauce, which I believe bears many uh, similarities to a Worcestershire prune, sauce. Prune. But there's raisin oh. puree oh, raisin, in A1 and then just a lot of like salt and vinegar and yeah. fish, so what fish is, notes. So what is Worcestershire sauce? And am I saying that right? <gasps> It's effectively like a fish sauce with vinegar, probably some caramel coloring, I spices. It was meat based, huh. not fish. I think based. Worcestershire is fish based. I could be is wrong. It? Someone look at you. Want to look up Worcestershire uh, sauce ingredients? Like yeah, Lee and Perrin's. Can people? Can people? I don't oh, believe it is vegan. Josh they is make, right. It is a base of vinegar and flavored with anchovies, molasses, oh. tamarind, onion, garlic, and other seasonings. This whole time I thought it was meat based. I think it's because you put it on meat. I thought it was meaty. Yeah, yeah or like it has the, the meat extract or the yeast extract, that like meat flavor, yeah, that kind of Vegemite yeah, Marmite. Yeah, yeah, or there's yeah, a product yeah. called Beefy Bovril. <laughs> that's a beef based oh, yeast extract. I know about Bovril. You know about Beefy Bovril, I know about Bovril, bro. <laughs> You're totally you wonkers, brought, eh? You brought it for me. You said put it on toast, and I said absolutely not, bruv. What yeah. if I put that in the description of the kind of man I'm looking for? Beefy I, I only like beefy bravels. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of chavs. I, <laughs> I don't want to put Worcestershire sauce on my pizza, and I'm, I'm very happy that he made this discovery. Yeah, same. I'm going to try I mean? it. It's it's the sour. It's the sour that doesn't do it because you already have the acid from the tomatoes to me. You get a lot of salt from the cheese. Yeah. You're adding right. more acid, more salt with a weird kind of sweet tang to it. I don't know that I need that. I You're like right. balsamic like glaze, glaze? on a yeah. pizza. It's so I don't know if they're yeah, I feel like it might I might like it. Yeah, it depends the type of pizza. Like a mushroomy pizza, like Worcestershire. If it has a fig. Oh, my God. A fig, a goat cheese, oh goat cheese yeah. fig, arugula. Also, arugula. I love like malt vinegar. Yeah. I don't like Which, malt vinegar. You know, I feel like that's usually on the table if you've got the Worcestershire and stuff like that. I'm not in love with it. It's like fish and chips. You put got fish and it. chips at a bar, like a beer bar the other day. They served the malt vinegar in a spritzer. Oh, a Spray that's bottling cool. and that's... spritz it on your fish. I'm down with that. Shout the out bottle? local peasant Sherman Oaks, baby. That's what's up. <laughs> My mom sent me an Instagram uh, with how to make a mimosa, and it was a girl who filled uh, champagne all the way to the top, and then she had a, a spritzer oh, with that's orange fun. juice that's in it. That's, very funny. that's a little fun that's, joke. That's a little fun joke for good. people who like to drink. If you date me, and you're going to deal with my family, and they're <laughs> drinking, so <laughs> that's going to give you a sneak peek. All right, next, next episode. <laughs> Hi, Josh and Nicole. This Hi. is Eliza from Virginia. Hi, Eliza. I'm calling with a potentially controversial and or educational opinion. Okay. When I moved out of Virginia, I realized that we had a special sauce Pineapple that our Mexican pizza. restaurants salsa couldn't Blanca. find anywhere else salsa that Blanca. my friends had heard of. White salsa. It's called Virginia White Salsa. Let's go. It's okay. a miracle okay. whip based sauce. Josh is so I personally funny. think it's better than red salsa. Um, so if y'all have heard of it, let us know. And yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for all you do. Love you guys. So excited for this one. Break it down. What is it? What is it? White salsa. It is one of those things that just started in Virginia or like the DFW area where Mexican restaurants give you a bowl of like a typical, you know, cantina style salsa, whatever you want to call it, like a tomato based salsa. Mm -hmm. And then you get salsa blanca, white salsa, which is basically mayonnaise with some spices in it and probably watered down a little bit. Yeah. And to me... I love, I feel like a lot of Mexican restaurants or these very Mexican-American restaurants that are slinging breakfast burritos out there, all these spots are just drizzling this orange mayonnaise on all of their food. They're going viral on the Instagram, mm. covering things in flaming hot Cheetos. Is this the pink Cheetos. sauce? Not that pink no, sauce, but, but pink sauces well. in general, right? Yeah. And so you get this like, you know, legitimate regional Mexican-American 
flavor from Virginia where they was just serving mayonnaise with their food the whole time. I believe she said it was Miracle Whip based, which is ah, ah. Ma- mayonnaise adjacent. And it is mayonnaise, but not legally allowed to be considered mayonnaise. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think it's great. And not you know, legally. <laughs> and I happen to love it. Kind of like a margarine can't be or yeah. some, cold yeah. butter. Totally. Yeah. Similar thing. It's basically just watered down mayonnaise with some corn syrup in it. And it's a delight. Um, but I love Virginia white salsa. I There's a lot of controversy on whether or not it is quote unquote Mexican. But for me, I mean, if it was made by a Mexican person in America, that's Mexican, baby. Like uh, you talk about Panda Express being its own regional form of Chinese food, mm-hmm. you know, which I think is a very legitimate way to look at it. You look at um, Chinese food in Eastern Turkmenistan, you know, depending on you know, how you feel well, about Chinese like sovereignty. there's Tex-Mex, but I'm trying to think of how you make it Virginia- Virgin Max. Virgin Max. Virgin Max. Virgin Max. Yeah. Virgin Max. Or, yeah. V-Max for short. V-Max is It's just good. lime made in a glass. No tequila. Yeah, yeah. It's just I like virgin. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love it. I, I've never actually had it. Me either. But I would like to go to Virginia and try it. I mean, queso is a great example. Make it here. Make it here. Oh, my God. Are we going to do Will It? Mexican white salsa. White salsa. <laughs> yeah, queso is its own very weird example of this, right? I love queso. It is ultra processed Velveeta cheese, mm. the most American product and Rotel, possible. Right? And Rotel Can canned I tomatoes. I okay, I was hanging out with somebody who didn't know that that is the ultimate like Super Bowl food. That's mm. like queso. It's the, well, it's the Velveeta with Rotel. Rotel. They yeah. were like, "What is Rotel?" And I was like, "You were like in your 30s." Some people don't know. Some <laughs> like, people don't have that life. They don't live the life. God. Of a queso queen. I mean, that's put fine. it in the crock pot. It's very easy. <laughs> I don't even love queso that much. I, just, I, I love know. queso. Rub it on my body. I love a lot that's of Tex-Mex food. Take. Carne guisada. Wow. Hot uh, queso wow. that like it's just hot, but gloopy hot. and not wet. It's not. It's not wet. <laughs> it's not leaky. It's like gloop. <laughs> leaky. <laughs> I love it. Sign me up. Next opinion, <sighs> Maggie. Light it up. Come on, Maggie. Hi. I love the intro. My name's Davis. Thank I'm you. From, We're sexy. Uh, the Bay Area, California. My opinion is that leftover tomato pasta sauce mm. makes great fried rice. And oh. I will not hear any uh, negativity about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let love him cook. <laughs> Let him cook. I understand. I get it. Have you ever done it? No. But I want to. Yeah, but this sounds kind of good. With some corn and some mushrooms. I don't know about that corn. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I'm curious how mushrooms. far he's going with fried rice. I'm curious what he, because I would make what I don't call fried rice, but I call rice slop, which is when I have <laughs> leftover rice. Because fried rice, if you want to do it like real, real properly, I mean, you can put, you know, oil and pan, throw rice in there, throw crap in there. And to me, that doesn't like a fried rice make. You know, if you're talking like legit, like Chinese egg fried rice in a lot. Oh, got to put an egg in there. Got to put an egg in there, right? But for me, I'm making more what I consider rice slop or what I call pan (laughs) rice because the rice goes in a pan. (laughs) Because if you're putting the tomato sauce in it, right, that's Uh going to stop it from frying immediately. Unless you You burn it. Unless you really like, you know, bring might, that you rice You have some far. water. I might get, <laughs> or, I, I think I'd want it to be like dirty rice. Like you mm, kind of burn it a mm-hmm. little. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Um, that said, maybe I'm splitting hairs here. Maybe this is a semantic argument for me. I would love to do this. You know, but that's great because yeah. I, I, you can throw anything in rice slop. Tomato sauce, <laughs> throw it in your rice slop. Ranch. Got, ranch. Honestly, throw no. it in your rice slop. <laughs> it's pizza flavored um, rice. You know, put some cheese on there. Broily. You got a rice pizza. Um. Um, um, jerk seasoning. Yeah, you had jerk rice slop, pan um, rice. I'm closing my eyes and looking at the fridge at work. Uh, <laughs> yuzu, yuzu, yuzu juice. I, you'll strain the broth out of your soup because then you just got consummated drink and then you just throw the soup solids in your rice and you got soup solid rice slop. I said yuzu. Yuzu juice, throw in your rice slop. <laughs> what were you saying? Sun chips. <laughs> <laughs> throw in your rice slop. Yeah, this is a great idea. You can throw anything in a rice slop. Yeah. I, I would hesitate on calling it fried rice personally. I would call it fried rice. Rice slop. I might put a little red wine in there. See? That's yeah, great. Rice hell slop. yeah, she crazy. <laughs> I am crazy. If I can't drink it, I'll eat it. You, know? <laughs> you guys ever do like the vodka soaked gummy bears? Never. No, Terrible. I haven't. Oh my God. We did this thing in college where somebody put a ton of gummy worms in a jug of Everclear. 
Oh, Sorry. that's that's and harsh. They just like turned to goo, so it was like you. Did like, you slurp it? You go. You <laughs> just reach in there, and then it would like liquefy. What? I wish I had cool college experiences like that. You go, never... We should just go crash parties. You go crash the ZBT parties at UCLA, bro. Listen, I used to do that, but they never gave me any sort of gummy alcohol thing. Oh. If you want to come oh, to Arkansas with me sometime, okay, and uh, experience it. The it's a dry county, so you got to drink oh. in the dorm rooms or oh. go to the American Legion. Which, if they're good in a good mood, they'll What's let the you. What's the American League? It's like an Elks Lodge. Yeah, it's like a it's for veterans. Oh, I don't mm. think they want me there. No, they'll let you in in Arkansas oh, because they yeah? want to look at pretty girls. Okay, is that true, Arkansas? Right in the yeah, they yeah. <laughs> Batesville, camera. Arkansas. What you got? What's good? <laughs> <laughs> Next voice now. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one that's kind of a weird. When I was a kid, Uh-oh. my mom used to make this for us, or we'd make it usually on Saturday morning before we'd plop down in front of the TV for cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons, back when that was a thing. Oh, uh, good old days. But my wife thinks it's weird, and I've never <laughs> heard anybody else that's, that's ever done that. And it's uh, just. <laughs> Cocoa and toast, or hot chocolate and toast. We you'd butter toast, cut it into Nesquik? triangles, Nesquik? and you would dip it oh. into the hot chocolate. And yep, it. this is good. Mm-hmm. It was so good, and I loved it so much. But I've never <laughs> found anybody else to do this. Am I that weird, or have you heard of this? Uh, Thanks. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I love uh, the podcast. Thanks. Oh, man. I got to start with something. Go for it. Okay. So, um, yes to all of this. But um, my sister got this McDonald's, like, it was supposed to be a fry maker, but all it did was cut up bread in the shape of fries. What? what? You, put a, you put a piece of bread in and then grind it, and then it would just make little strips, and then you'd eat bread and pretend it was fries. Um, but <laughs> what, we would, what we would do is my mom would put, uh, like, Ovaltine powder on it, yeah, and then you just put it in there and crank it. So we ate it like that sometimes. Hell yeah! But for the most part, I remember making this for my parents in the morning because on the weekends you would wake up at like six a.m. because you're sure. a psychotic little kid, yeah. and um, you would like. So I would I couldn't use the toaster because um, I couldn't reach it <laughs> at the time, if you can believe that. Um, and so I just put butter on some bread and sugar. And then just yeah. present it to my parents in Aww. bed and be like, I made you breakfast. You're so cute. And then I would watch them eat it like they had to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to. But you made it. toast, it was something for sure. And like, you know, chocolate powder toast with mm-hmm. butter and then you put the hot cocoa powder on it. Totally did that. It sounds so good. I'm this person's excited. talking about like a, a cup of cocoa with the bread That's in it. Right. Right? That's right. You did say butter sugar toast, I think. But yeah, I think, yeah, I understand. You dunk it in there. That sounds like something, if you told me that in Colombia. They do something like that. They do that every single day. What fell? My chapstick. <laughs> if you told me that they do this every single day in a country like Colombia yeah. or something, I would fully believe that. I'd be like, oh yeah, I've, I've heard of that. It's uh, tos, pan tostada o chocolate or something. That's it. And they may. Very well may. It sounds something to me very elegant and very um, you know, Epicurean in a way that I love. In Spain, they dip their bread in coffee. Yeah, there that's like go. a thing, and this is like the American. Well, I mean, child when you call the the croissant that you, there's that guy on on uh, Instagram who makes croissants, and it's like the most beautiful croissant I've ever is seen. Is their name Trevor? He, I think so, <laughs> but he's very handsome. And then he makes them, and then there's the. Uh, cappuccino and then he like opens it and then dunks it in and mm-hmm. just like eats the whole thing mm. and he's like yeah it looks so good I want to do it but um, yeah I think that it's it is like soup if you want to I, I mean, like this I would do this if same. I was if I was an adult I would do it if I was a kid I would do it more than I would as an adult yeah I mean I make um, spinster nachos which is <laughs> like it's bread um, with a piece of cheese so and much fold bread. It, and then you dunk it in red wine and wow, then, those and then are... you drink you drink the wine too. They used like... to do that in like medieval courts in England. They called it a wine sop. You'd put a piece yeah. of toast in the wine and then yeah. you'd eat the toast afterwards. So yeah. you're pretty fancy. Yeah. Also, my grandmother, <laughs> this may be a southern thing, she would um put cornbread in a cup and then pour buttermilk on it and then yes. oh my gosh, eat it with a spoon. So... <gasps> top chef champion Kelsey. Yeah, let's have more top Yum. chef talk on that show. Kelsey Barnard Clark made that. I mean, a fancy version of that for her uh, finale winning dish. 
in uh, Top Chef. I believe it was Charleston. Wow. The season they did. And every and the judges, they were like judges from like Macau. And they were just like, this is incredible. I've never had anything like this. So yeah, that's very, awesome. So I think it's very cool. That's I got to keep the tradition up and do that. Yeah, and we'll do it too. We'll do what it too. What the show is yeah. about. Yeah. Maintaining tradition. culinary traditions. Tradition. With, with tradition. <laughs> Tradition. Tradition. <laughs> and on that note, thank you for listening to A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. We got new audio-only episodes for you every Wednesday, and then the video drops on Fridays. That's right, Josh. And if you want to be featured on Opinions or Casseroles, you can hit us up at 833-DOGPOD1. That number one more time is 833-DOGPOD1. Wow. We're the wettest and wildest <laughs> food Ew. podcast out there. Sorry. Emily, before. Emily, <laughs> what's where, up? Where can they find you? Well, you know, around here. Okay. Um, <laughs> what about, give them your hats. Tell them, tell them okay. your socials. Um, Twitter is at Flemily Emming, and then Instagram is at M Flemily because some uh, stubborn yoga lady will not give me flemily emming back for instagram and uh sorry so don't harass this, this do not person. harass the yoga please don't I, not nice she doesn't need it and it's fine um <laughs> is that it <laughs> that's Anything it else? but also you guys watch meals of history we've got like 21 episodes now i'm so proud that we've gone this long and um I hope we can keep making it. I don't know if we've done every <sighs> year in history so far. <laughs> but um, I, please watch that. And then um, please go get on Mythical. Ew! Ew! Put Mythical. your foot down now! What? No, we got to give, the the, give the people what they want. Got to give the people what they want. There were things attached to the, to the bottom. There were things attached to the bottom I of get your it. foot. You, you're promoting your own feet. <laughs> Thank and you. And I want to promote Mythical <laughs> Society specials, <laughs> which are all the Dirk and Patty ones. Um, if you're a fan of that, you Ew, got, get on the app and watch. Watch it. Yeah, download the app. Yeah. <laughs> for more Mythical <laughs> Kitchen, check us out on YouTube, where we launch new videos every week. You oh, might yeah. Even see. Check, check me out on wik- wikifeet.com. Dude, you have a five. Oh, my God. 4.87 rating, Nicole. That's what it looks like. Get why used is to it. it? Why is it like that? I'm I impressed he doesn't really have any calluses. Uh, he had, no, no, no. His callus, it, I don't it, wear it travels. Socks. It, it travels. travels? Yeah, he has a traveling callus. Look at the hands. The hands are kind of brutal. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, yeah, the hands are brutal. His callus starts at the, at the heel. The heel, and it travels up. My left foot isn't as good as my right. 